Defensive display once again, shutting down Lake Park, 16 to nothing, under 100 yards allowed by your defense. And Dick, uh, we continue to laud the defense. I guess they, they've certainly been the most consistent part of your, your team all year long. And at this stage of the game, your defense can take your ball club a long way into the postseason if they play like that. Uh, tough to score on, tough to move the ball on. You guys could do quite well. Well, we depend a lot on our defense, Craig. And you know, Lake Park uh, had difficult time even getting getting close to our own 30-yard line, and you know, uh, they didn't even you know as far as putting the ball in goes. And our offense traveled up and down between the 20s, but you know, couldn't take and put it in from there. And uh, we were knocking on the goal line, and you know, four or five times besides our two scores there in the first quarter, and just couldn't put it in. And you know, that that's a concern that I got now going in the playoff game. Yeah, the offense uh, moved the ball well, middle of the field, but did have some trouble inside the 10 and inside the 5 on a couple of occasions. But you had to feel good about uh, your second touchdown, that touchdown pass, that 30-yard pass play. It looks like uh, Rob Gravely's throwing the ball real well, and Peter Sverin, who started the year quarterback for you, back at that flanker spot where he has some uh, past experience on the varsity, he was open a lot yesterday. Yeah, he was. Uh, Pete played the flanker for us there the last couple of years. Uh, from Coach Mark Tungseth, and and uh, is the fastest runner on the team, and has also got good hands. So with Gravely's passing ability, you know, we figured we might as well take and use that combination as a be another weapon for us on offense. And uh, you know, I think back at that first quarter where where we put in the two touchdowns and the two extra points with with uh, you know four different guys taking the scoring for us. So that was a, it looks awful big after you you know go the next three quarters without even a score. And uh, that, that one-yard run by Rob Gravely, which was a quarterback sneak uh, uh, brought down there, and the, the extra point uh, play from a Gravely pass to Todd Bothan, giving us an 8 nothing lead, and then coming right back again uh, after their bad punt and uh, marching down there and then finally scoring, I think it was from the second play or third from the, on, our, on that second drive for us to Rob Gravely, a 30-yard pass to Peter Sparrow, he caught it in the end zone and really had to take and the, the pass wasn't thrown that well. I, we take a look at the video and it was kind of duck flying through the air and Peter take and turned around, you know, across his shoulder and caught the ball and brought it in there. And that was, uh, that was it's nice to be two up and then coming back with the extra point play uh, to Paul Davis who got open on a little bootleg pass in the corner there, you know, gave us a 60 nothing lead and a lot of confidence, you know, going into the rest of the game and from then on it was a defensive battle. You know, uh, sometimes it takes an injury, I guess, for you to discover somebody. And, and Rob Gravely, not only at the quarterback spot, but defensively has been playing very well for you in that secondary. He picked off three passes yesterday or in your game this week, and he uh, he caught a couple of them that uh, you have to look at the films a few times and say, how in the world did he regain the composure or concentrate on that ball after deflecting it to pull it in? Well, we, he uh, worked hard in practice, and we, we drilled him quite a bit on staying with that number 99, the fouls, because we knew we were going to throw to him. So he played him man-to-man -man and uh, you know did a good job uh, covering him. And when the ball was in the air, he went for the ball just as much as he did. the other guy did. And, and he came down with three times, and they were all in the first half. And a couple of times where it was deflected, he actually caught, uh, you know, intercepted the ball when he was on his back. So, um, you know, we definitely have to leave him back there on defense because he's a, a good pass uh, defender for us, and uh, he's earned the spot back there. Bothan and Olson ran the ball well for you this week. Uh, pretty similar yardage totals, I think, and both effective when you when you needed them to get some yardage. They they seem to come through. Do you like that tandem in the backfield? Well, yeah, they, they've been. It's good that Jeff came along. Uh, you know, uh, Bobby Edlin, you know, started back there in the Underwood game and got hurt, and and uh, Jeff has, has, has took over and he averaged four yards a carry. Uh, you know, over going over 60, 60 yards and had a had, had a longest run of eleven. And Todd Bothan, of course. When he goes in on a dive, uh, average three yards a carry, came through with about 60 yards also, had the longest run of about seven. And those two guys are, you know, working together. Are, I'm still a little concerned. So the third game back there with Rob Gravely, and our timing on every single play isn't, isn't you know, the way we'd like it. But uh, there, but it'll, it'll improve, and we're going to take and work on this week now when we go into Motley. And we talked about the defense being a key. How about the kicking game? We were talking about that a little uh, after the game and the fact that uh, Jamie Wallace certainly gives you a big boost there and can mean uh, a lot in, in postseason play. You know, even on his punts, and he averaged 41 yards a punt, he punted three times, and they, they might not go 41 yards in the air, but he's got that kick to it where the, the, where the, 
the punt goes off at an angle, and it's kind of hard for just one defensive back to take and catch that thing, and oftentimes it hits the ground and rolls for another 10, 15 yards. And, you know, that's in the, when you can take an average of punt of 41 and, you know, get 50 yards in every single kickoff, that, that really is nice because we haven't had that, you know, for a number of years, and Jamie is really doing a good job for us in the kicking area. Are you pleased with your draw for the first round, Motley, and do you know much about him? Well, I, we haven't had a chance to scout him because they've had, uh, you know, games the same night that we have, and they had a, a bye this week. But uh, in talking to some of the coaches who have played them, uh, they have a very tough football team and uh, are 5-2 and two on the year and could very easily have been 6-1 and one with a seven-game schedule. They uh, went into double overtime uh, with Eagle Bend, and, and as you know, Verndale uh, was the top of that conference, and Eagle Bend and Motley took and fought it off for the second spot, and, and Eagle Bend, I think, was fortunate enough to come out on top in a double overtime game. But uh, I've heard they've run out of the wishbone formation, with a very strong uh, uh, fullback in, in Roger Winshuttle, and uh, he carried the ball 14 times against Audubon for approximately 100 yards, and, and uh, they may uh, even go in the wishbone formation, uh, or in eye formation and a wishbone formation, and, and uh, we're going to have to take and control this big halfback. Uh, they, they also hand off their flanker and, of course, the fullback a number of times. They got some big tight ends, and uh, one lineman named Charlie Brown, who was out uh, of the Ottawa game the first game of the season, I guess is really a tough lineman, and, and most likely he's in there now uh, towards the end of the season. So uh, I uh, haven't heard that much about him, but everything I've heard about him has been, has been tough and positive. If they do come out with a wishbone, where will your defense be uh, pressured the most, and where will they, you have to really shine? Well, if they come out with a wishbone, which is a very strong... This past week, Battle Lake knocked off Monaga 20 to 14. It was Alexandria 14, St. Cloud Apollo nothing. Brainerd shut out Little Falls, or beat Little Falls 10 to 8, rather. Shakyal, Alberta over Herman North. All right, we got the mic. Can you hear us now, bud? Are we coming in, bud? You're coming oh, in loud and clear. Good, bud. We're ready to go then. Okay, not too many uh, football scores last night. We have uh, Cyrus Hancock defeating Ashby 35 to 6. Good ball game to start out with. It went uh, through the first half pretty good, and then uh, under beautiful fall conditions, and then all of a sudden Mother Nature took over and dropped all kinds of snow and wind on it and uh, really uh, turned the ball game around to where it wasn't much of a ball game at all, and Cyrus Hancock won it 35-6. to six. Now, don't anyone call me when I call it Cyrus Hancock, but down there they don't even know whether it's Cyrus, Cyrus Hancock or Hancock Cyrus. They said it all depends on who you're talking to. So we'll call it Cyrus Hancock because last night we had it the other way. Kelly or North Home, 36, Oakley 34, and Oakley have lost a bundle of two-point decisions this year. Gerhardt Might came up to Wheaton. Gerhardt Might, for those of you who don't know, is the guy who won the first nine-man state football championship ever as he coached the Ratsy Tigers to that championship some 15 years ago. He defeated Wheaton last night 53 to 7. We do have uh, a few other scores here that might be interesting to you as far as uh, sports are concerned in collegiate hockey, Minnesota Duluth over North Dakota 6 to 4. North Dakota having a tough time getting going this year. Minnesota romped over Northern Michigan 10 to 2. Denver 5, Colorado College 4, Wisconsin 4, and Michigan Tech 2. We have some uh, volleyball scores. A Pelican Rapids over Dilworth, 15-2, 15-11, and 15-10. Hawley lost their first game to Frazee, 14, that can't be, 14-15. Yeah. So they got to win by two, so it had to be 14-16, and uh, Hawley won 15-13, 15-9, and 15-11. Winger, Erskine McIntosh, Winnie Mac, tougher than a cob. They won the Moorhead Tournament. They defeated Ada Boyer 15-9, 15-13, and 15-1. And we'll be back after this word, and we'll talk with Craig Samuelson, who's in a hurry to get down and watch the Cobbers get beat by the Johnnies. 